Today we're going to talk about a few other things. Today we're going to talk about a few other things. We're going to prove that Israel is the heart of the Garden of Eden. And I've read many commentaries on the Garden of Eden. And you know what I, what I found out about the vast majority, not all of them, but the majority of them, they tend to ignore the continent of Africa. And that, that kind of piqued my interest because I said, that's one of, that is the richest continent on the planet that we know of today. How could you talk about the Garden of Eden and ignore that place? I said, this doesn't matter. And it, it, it mentions Ethiopia. But the commentaries will talk about um, every place else but that. Many of them, not all of them, but most of them. All right, so we're going to open up. Give me a, no, write this down. I want you to just take good notes today. When you read the scriptures, how many of you read the first 12 books of Genesis? Raise your hand. Have you read the first 12 chapters? First, okay, very good. Okay, only a few sisters. Wow. Wow, look how few hands over there. See there? Y'all see there? See, brothers? You'll be mad when you get a wife and she can't find Leviticus. Where is it? I don't know. What is that? You gonna, I'm telling you, you better do a, a test before you marry them. You're going to get somebody dumb as a rock. All I know is John Hagee and Kraflo. Okay. Well, write this down. When you, you, the Bible mentions in Genesis chapter 2, it mentions Ethiopia. Genesis chapter 2, Ethiopia is mentioned. Genesis chapter 12, Egypt is mentioned. So right there, you got two countries in Africa mentioned uh, in the first 12 books, within the first 12 books, first 12 chapters of Genesis. You read about Ethiopia, you read about Egypt. So how in the world do you talk about the Garden of Eden and ignore Africa? That's an oxymoron. Genesis 10 mentions Iraq. Write that down. Genesis 10 mentions Iraq. But we're going to start off with Genesis 2. Let's start there. Let's begin with Genesis chapter 2. We're going to start at verse 1 and read down. Genesis chapter 2, verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God Created and made. It's Leviticus 23. The same way God rested, he commanded us to rest on the Sabbath. Go ahead. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Mm -hmm. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth. And every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. And there was not a man to till the ground. This is why during the time of Noah, it was a shock. When Noah said it was going to rain, water was going to come from heaven, people didn't believe him because it had never happened before. That's what it's saying. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. And then it says, and there was not a man to till the ground. Now watch this, because Adam hadn't been created yet. Go ahead. But there went up a mist from the earth. A dew, a fog. Go ahead. And watered the whole face of the ground. So that's how the plants and all the vegetation had gotten watered. God would send a mist. Go ahead. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Put the picture of Adam, the creation, please, on the screen. I always loved it. I saw this painting a while ago, years ago, and I always loved it when I saw this thing. Yes, I always loved that picture right there. Read that again. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So Adam was created. He gave Adam life. He gave Adam's, Adam law. That almost says something right there, but we're going to read on. Go ahead. Go ahead. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. Now that's what you want to get to. Can you put the map up? So what we're going to look at is examine Eden. So now, the left side of the screen where it says Canada, United States, Central America, Mexico, Central America, and South America. That has not come into the picture as of yet. These, uh, this side, the left side of Canada, US, Mexico, and South America doesn't come into the picture until you read 2nd Ezra, the 13th chapter, verse 40 down to 45. 
So, read verse 8 again. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. So, what we're dealing with is the east now. This side with the United, that's the west. We're only going to deal right now with the eastern side. That's where you see the continent of Africa. You got China. You got Australia. Why is Australia so big? But that's what they do. You got Russia, uh, Mongolia over there. This is considered the eastern air, eastern part of the world. So we're going to concentrate here to find out and establish where was the Garden of Eden, where did it begin, where did it end, where did it extend to and from. Okay, you can take that off the screen now. We're going to use that later on, no? So don't delete it. Just let's go back. All right, what verse you at? Verse 9. Go ahead. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow Wait a minute, hold on. I'm sorry. Watch this, watch this. Put the map back up. I, I, put the map back. Watch this. Zoom in. Zoom in on Israelite. Can you see Israelite? Can you zoom in closer? It's, it's too much. Right above Egypt. You, can y'all see Egypt? Do y'all see Egypt on the continent of Africa? Okay, right above that goes towards Israel. Now read verse 7. Watch this. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Read. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Now the question is, he put the man eastward in Eden. Where is that? Get Galatians 4.26. It's telling you right there. Galatians is going to tell you. This is the heart of the garden. Watch this. Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. See that part, which is the mother of us all? That's letting you know where creation was, where Adam was. Adam followed by Eve and the generations of mankind. Everybody see that? So it's telling you right there regarding Jerusalem, that's the motherland right there. That's what G G Genesis 2 Verse 7 and 8 is saying. Let's go back to Genesis 2 now. Bear with me a second. Bear with me a second. Oh, let me get some more. I'm not done yet. Give me Ezekiel 36. So I'm proving to you that Jerusalem, the land of Israel, is the heart of the Garden of Eden. That's what I wanted. So we used with Genesis 2 verse 8. We precept that with Galatians 4.26, where it says Jerusalem, which is above is free, which is the mother of us all. That's the motherland. Now we're going to Ezekiel 36. I want verse 1, then we're going to jump down. Ezekiel 36, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Also, thou son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel. Prophesy unto the mountains of what? Of Israel. Of Israel. Go ahead. And say, ye mountains of Israel. Hear the word of the Lord. Subject matter, Israel, the land of Israel. Jump down to verse 35 and 36. This is what God says about the land of Israel. And they shall say, this land that was desolate. Because is Israel today is a desolate land. It's like a damn uh, uh, desert out there. Go ahead, read it again. And they shall say. This land that was desolate is become like the Garden of Eden. This land that was desolate, when the children of Israel return, shall become like the Garden of Eden. Why? Because that was the heart of it. Read. And the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited. When we inhabit the land again, the real Israelites, the 12 tribes, is going to be as the Garden of Eden. Read. Then the heathen that are left round about you shall know that I, the Lord, build that ruined places. Build the ruined places. Build the ruined places mm -hmm. and plant that that was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it, and I will do it. He spoke it, he will do it. So it's telling you that Israel is the heart of the garden of... So now you have a pinpoint. Now the Bible's telling you that Jerusalem, Israel, was the garden of Eden. Now, that ain't it, though, because that's just the heart where mankind began. Now we're going to see how it extended. Go back to Genesis 2 now. Genesis chapter 2, verse 8. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. 
And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Mm -hmm. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now this verse 9 here is going into several things. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. That's going into the literal trees. That's we got our diet when you jump down, I believe it's, uh, go back to chapter 1 and verse 29. Read that. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit, which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. For food. So now we go back to Genesis 2 and verse 9 again. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. That's what it's referring to. Go ahead. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden is referring to the Lord. Okay, go ahead. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's the righteous side uh, with the angels and the unrighteous side. Good and evil. God's laws. What, what not to do, and if you do, this is what's going to happen. That's all. Let's go. That's a metaphor. Now verse 10. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. A river. Now notice it does not give the name of the river here. It says a river. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. Read. And from thence it was parted. And became into four heads. This river had four, write this down, this river has four heads. So a river watered the garden, and this river had four heads. So this is what you want to look at. This is what we want to examine. This is what we want to examine. Everybody with me right now? Yes, sir. So now, what is the river that watered the garden? Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.